guys welcome to my channel my name is cameron i own an embroidery business called garcia's goods where i make embroidered apparel and today i'm gonna show you how to make this adorable mama floral applique sweatshirt and i know applique can be a very tricky process i at one point was like i'm never doing applique ever again but i was like you know what no i'm gonna practice and i'm gonna learn how to perfect this so that's what we're gonna start off with today i'm really excited let's get right into the video okay so first things first, let's talk about the supplies that we're gonna need today. Obviously, we need supplies. I am using a Jersey's 50-50 Ash Gray sweatshirt. No particular reason, it's just what I had on hand. I'm also using this fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. It feels like forever ago, and I just haven't had the opportunity to use it, so I am so excited to use this fabric today, you guys. Also, make sure you check out Hobby Lobby if you're looking for some affordable fabrics. A lot of times they have sales, and who doesn't wanna miss out on a sale? Not a sponsorship. I'm just saying that's where I go, you know what I'm saying? I love to use exquisite threads. So I'm using this beautiful blue thread from them today. I love it so, so, so much. I think it's gorgeous and I really feel like it complements this fabric really well. Heat and bond light is absolutely essential to applique. If you hear anything I say today, please hear, you need to use heat and bond light. It's the purple one, not the red one, the purple one. I love to use cutaway stabilizers, so that's what I'm gonna use today. They say if you wear it, don't tear it, and I am wearing this, so we will not be tearing it. Next, I'm using my eight by 12 hoop. And then I'm using an air erasable marker to kind of pinpoint exactly where I want to put my design. And I have this nifty little design placement guide that kind of helps me pinpoint the center and the distance where I can put my design. So I love using this. I got off Amazon and anything that I've gotten off Amazon and they're my favorites, I do have them linked below. So make sure you go check those out. Using my multi-needle machine for this. Of course, you need an embroidery machine to do this. I'll also be using my Cricut Easy Mini Press today. I'm going to use it to adhere the heat and bond onto the back of the fabric as well as to my sweatshirt now you don't have to have a cricket easy mini press but some type of iron so that you can press it down <laughs> we'll need some type of iron and last but certainly not least not least at all i'm going to be using some applique scissors today these are crucial when it comes to getting in the nooks and crannies because you're going to be wanting to cut as much of that excess fabric off as possible and these scissors allow you to get really really close to the stitches and one pair of mine are actually curved up a little bit so that they don't cut the sweatshirt but still be careful because you can still cut the sweatshirt i have done that and it made me want to cry and then i have the duckbill ones i don't really use those a lot to be honest and then i have these really pointy ones that i use it to poke holes in the holes of letters that need to come out I'll show you all of that later on. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead, like this video, and subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos just like this. Now let's hoop our sweatshirt. I've got my design placement guide here, and I'm really just focusing on trying to center that as much as possible with the neck of my sweatshirt. I'm actually putting a mark at about three and a half inches down from the neck of the sweatshirt. Then I'm just cutting out my stabilizer here. I just want to get a little bit of excess stabilizer. This just helps with the hooping process for things to not slip and slide. Then of course I'm lint rolling to remove any excess fuzz or any hair or anything. I'm wiggling in the bottom part of my hoop because sometimes the fabric can get kind of bunched up. So I'm going to smooth everything out as well. This just overall helps for everything to be nice and flat and smooth to get the hoop as straight as possible so that your design will stitch as straight as possible. Putting in the stabilizer, using those two points on the top part of my hoop to align everything. And then I'm just removing some of the excess fabric. I'm not pulling or stretching, just very gently removing some of the excess fabric that is in the hoop. Ignore my little tail here. I don't have a wireless mic yet, but it's okay. But now that we've got it hooped, we're gonna load it onto our machine. <laughs> Drape it over my microphone. Got to pull my things out and make it bigger. Just kidding. Before I do this, since this is a multi-needle, I need to, how far will my tail go? I have an umbilical cord here. I need to oil my machine first. Just do a little drop on the thing. We can talk about that in another video. Not today. Okay. I think I still need to put my thread on here, but I'll do that in a second. But now we're just gonna take it and load her on. I love that sound. Clicky, clicky. Now what I'm doing is just making sure that my sweatshirt is not stuck anywhere. And I'm kind of pulling out my sleeves like wings. The design that I'm going to use is a design I've already set up. I can always do a video where I like show you how I go through that process of making the design, but stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not, and if I come up with that, you'll be able to see it. So the mama design that I've got set up on here is one I've made before. I've used several times for stuff. So I'm just going to, I've got my flash drive already loaded on here, and I'm going to pull it up. 
Just kidding, that's the wrong flash drive. So the process of application is going to be three rounds of stitching basically. You're gonna have a run stitch that is going to show you where your design is going to be, where you'll need your fabric to go. The second one will be where you can tack down your applique fabric. So you'll stitch, it'll stitch mama with just a run stitch, a single run stitch. Then I'll put my fabric down with the heat and bond light attached to the back of it. Then I'll let it do the second run stitch and it will tack all of it down. Sometimes I'll do two of those tack down stitches so that it's just a little bit more secure. Then I'll take it off or you can leave it on whatever works best for you. And then I'm going to cut all the fabric off, press it with my mini press so it's stuck on there good. Come back and let it do the zigzag or satin stitch or whatever it is that you prefer. Oh, my posture is probably terrible. Lord help me, y'all should have taught me. So I don't know if I said, but I'm not doing a satin border on this. Satin border is where it's just, I don't know how to describe it, I'll put a thing. I'll show you a picture. Ta-da, there's a picture on there. Doing a zigzag, it is really popular right now and it takes way less time, so I really like doing that. So we've got the design set up. I'm going to end my edit because I don't really want to change anything. But what we're doing right now is we're gonna make sure that my crosshair for the top of the design, which that indicates, is where my dot is because I've already decided that that's where I want my design to go. So I'm just going to, I think I need to move it just to the left just a little bit. See? Let's see what it does. And then we're gonna come down just a little bit. Oh, that's like literally, that's like literally perfect. Okay, so great. So now we are ready to stitch. We just have to hit all the bite nice buttons. Now we can see that it's done its first round of stitches. This is telling me exactly where my fabric and my applique is going to go. So now I can go and cut my fabric out and add my heat and bond to it. You don't technically have to wait until you get done doing that to cut out your fabric. It's a good way to make sure that you don't cut out excess fabric, you know, cause sometimes that could just be a waste. But now let's hop over and let's go cut out our fabric and add our heat and bond. Here's our heat and bond. Here's our fabric. I'm gonna get my fabric scissors if I can find them. For the sake of my sanity, I'm just gonna go ahead and use these some ugly stuff. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can cut this out. Oh, I'm so excited for this, this is so pretty. So I know that my design is roughly like 10 inches or so. So I usually just end up cutting about a foot. Just so that I have a little bit extra to have just in case. It makes it a little bit easier to cut. I'm probably going way too high. I'm going against my own rules. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay. And yes, I'm gonna ball this up and throw this up. Then I'm gonna whip out my ironing board. It's my ironing board my mother got me when I was in college and I never used it. But whenever I started my business, I use it every single day pretty much. So shout out to mom. All right, so now I'm gonna turn on my easy press. I just go ahead and put it on the highest setting just so that I don't have to whatever. I'm gonna pull out my heat and bond. You can like kind of patch your way through this. Like I might use like this section then I might cut some more. One important thing you can see this is glossy and has a design to it. This is the adhesive. This is what is going to go down on the back of your fabric. This is just a top that you're going to peel off in a moment whenever it's cooled down. We're gonna put that section there. Remember the adhesive, the rough side, ugly side to ugly side. And I might use this. Oh, look at that. Look at God. Blessings on blessings. Oh, I'm like a wizard. That's like perfect. Oh, perfect timing. So now what I'm gonna do is I am just pressing this onto the back. I'm not using like a crap ton of pressure or anything, but I am really making sure I get in there. I'm getting it adhered. Be careful, this will be hot, so don't burn your hands. 
kind of press the top. And if I'm doing this wrong, let me know in the comments. Gotta let this cool, because if we take it off too early, we're gonna pull the adhesive off, and then what was the point in you doing it? So we're gonna let it cool till it's cool till it's still really hot right now. Doesn't take too long, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute or so. So we're gonna let that cool, and then we'll just peel it off. Then we'll move on to actually tacking it down to the sweatshirt. So I'll be right back. So now that this is cool, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna peel it off. See that glossiness? That is our adhesive. Perfection. If you take it off too early, you won't really see that. I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice look at that yay all right now let's put it on so now we are at the fun part I'm trying to see if there's any type of orientation to this I don't think so but for some reason I like it like this so maybe there is one so we're gonna do it like this and look it's gonna go right over everything yeah! here's the edge of my design fully covers edge of my design fully covers you want to check the top too especially this is an arch design so obviously it comes up in the center and there's plenty that's not mine doing a little extra i sometimes have my designs with random colors like obviously i'm not doing pink today i'm gonna do that blue right there so what i have to do on my machine is right here is where i'll select i'm flipping you off i'm sorry <laughs> is where i will select the color i put it on five because that's the number of the blue color so I picked five and I'm gonna press okay. Then I wanna make sure it stops after this one. It doesn't just try to keep going because with these multi-needle machines, it'll just keep stitching, of course, which is a good thing. But you know, in this case, I need to take it off and I need to cut it. So I'm gonna put a stop there so that when it gets done doing this tag down stitch, it will stop stitching. I can take it off and I can cut the excess fabric off. I'm gonna lock it and it's ready to roll. So now that it's done, you can see it has stopped for me. I'm so excited, you guys. This is absolutely so gorgeous. I really feel like I picked the perfect color. So now we're gonna take it off. I can do this with one hand. Skills, skills, skills. Look, oh, I gotta do it backwards. Can't think. <laughs> oh, wow. Here we go. All right. Now I'm gonna bring it over here. Let's cut all this off in a time lapse. That'd be preferable. Now for the most dreaded part, the a-hole. <laughs> get it, get it. So what we're gonna do here is I am probably going to use, these are really nice and pointy and I'm gonna be able to just try to poke a little hole right there in the hole of the letter A and then I'll just cut it out. And I'm gonna do it all film because I'm gonna mess up otherwise, so. Okay, I successfully removed the a-holes and so now I'm gonna double check that there's not any really big spots See, I think there is actually kind of a bigger spot right here on the the a hill that I need to cut. And um, there's a little spot right there. Because if you don't cut some of those, it might show up whenever you do your satin or your zigzag like I'm doing today. And it'll look kind of funky and I don't like that. So. All right, everything else is pretty good. So now we're gonna just press it down. A really good press on this as well this will get out any of those little bubbles that you might see don't be afraid of those you know where like there's a little pucker under the fabric most of the time those will just iron out that's a great thing for using the heat and bond and doing this way that you can get those out and if it doesn't come out it's okay you can always start over that's the beauty of things in life you can just start over if it doesn't work out you can try try again until you succeed it's already so pretty like look at that i could leave it like that 
but those stitches are not very stable. So we're gonna do the zigzag. So let's go do that. So here we go. Now, the last one, I've gotta change my thing again back to five. We're gonna be done, y'all. All right, we're gonna lock it and we're gonna go. Drum roll, please. And here's the final result. I am so happy with this, you guys. I think it came out absolutely stunning. And I'm so excited to get to wear this. Even though I'm not a mom, I might still wear it because it's just so cute. I love it so much. And I really like the zigzag on here. To me, it gives it this almost like very cottage chic kind of vibe, like undone, but it's like perfectly done in that sense. And I love it so, so, so much. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to try to answer them as best as possible. And I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful time doing some fun applique. And tag me. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok and show me what you've been doing. I'd love to see it. All right. Love you guys. Bye.